Hello everybody, welcome to another tutorial video and today we will be covering the piston. Now before we hop into the video, I just want to say that I made this better hex design, uh, well from the previous video, it doesn't shut off instantly, but if you input zero, it does uh, convert to zero instantly. So as you see here, it does actually work. Now, pistons have a very massive utility and we'll get to that eventually. What you need to know for now is that sticky pistons push and pull blocks and normal pistons just push them. Now, pistons actually have this Java specific mechanic where if you input a one tick or lower, yes, there is lower pulses, we'll get to that later, into it, it will actually spit out the block, but it will still pick it up. So this functions as a sort of toggle bit, keep that in mind. Now, since pistons have so many uses and, well, interact with so many different blocks, there's no way for me to cover all of that in this video. Now, you'll have to figure that out on your own, but the one I will tell you is that if you push a piston against a wall, trapdoors also work for this, by the way, it will actually ripple downwards, and observers can detect that update uh, if you place them like that. Now, already with all of that, we can make some very interesting stuff. Over here, for example, this is a shifter, a bit shifter that can shift up and down. As you see, I have a bit on right here. When it is on, the signal from this observer can pass into this repeater. And it actually does a bit of logic over there. Uh, that's just the basic thing you have to know. So if you check down there, that shifts upwards. Now, if I want to switch that, I actually have a, a lever down here, actually. That does do that for me. It doesn't switch instantly, uh, it's very easy to implement that too, but as you see that does reverse the switching. Now an example of the toggle bit mechanic, which I did mention, is this right here. This is an adder subtractor. How it works is that if you want to add, basically it changes every bit until it finds the first empty one and then it toggles that one and goes no further. If you want to subtract, it just reverses that rule. As you see here right now, we are in subtract mode. Add that, that, and that, minus that. Now, pistons have another interesting mechanic where they can be powered but not updated. This is called quasi-connectivity. How it works is that basically a piston has a hitbox like a door, but if it's powered in the top block, it has to be updated afterwards. This here is a bud, and let's spell like that. And it detects block updates, and we will get to that in a moment. First of all, I'd like to show you that should not be powered, right? And when we update it, it gets powered. Now, this is a very useful mechanic and it is Java only. By the way, I am a Java only YouTuber if you're a Bedrock player. Um, so most of my stuff might not work for you. Either way, here is a very good way to, well, actually use that mechanic. Because you can you should also uh, make pistons stick up. So as you see, this is storing information. And that's not getting cleared, but if you want to clear it, you just do that. Before we move on to the more complicated stuff, here's an example of how piston specifically, not the trapdoors cannot function like this, uh, can work with walls. This is an insta-carry adder. It uses some pretty complicated logic. I will not explain it right now. But basically, it works off of walls to do addition, and it's infinitely stackable. So if I do that, 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 and that, it's 8 tick, by the way, and I do that, you see it instantly ripples. Alright, and now we're gonna get into the more complicated mechanics of pistons, and that is, well, redstone pulses shorter than a tick. This is called zero ticking, by the way. So I'm gonna show you my favorite one, which is with the before mentioned bud. Um, they do actually generate zero tick signals. So if I grab dust, there is other ways, by the way, uh, that you can find a lot of them. On the internet, this is nothing new. I need to actually grab obsidian. There. And basically, this generates a pulse that is under one tick, as you saw there. Now, how we can check that is if it teleports block. So I'm going to set tick rate to 3. You're going to watch that very closely. That block teleported, yes. Now, dust is highly locational when it comes to these sticks. I have a mod that fixes it, however... Uh, for your sake, I will not be using it like that. I will just show you a very simple example in a second. Uh, location LD can be controlled in two main ways, uh, and that is via walls. Walls ripple at, well, they create a, well, they schedule updates, right, from top to bottom when they ripple. So you can control them like that, 
and you can also use rails. Now, rails are a bit different. Rails, when you power them, if you power it here, yes, that does actually update here. But when you power it like that, it starts updating from the forward end. Now, another thing I should mention is that repeaters and comparators have a different update order. If you check, if you put a repeater and a comparator like that, the repeater always goes first. You can also generate zero tick signals via this. There's a, a couple other examples of this mechanic. However, uh, we will not be using a those. A very today. basic example of how zero tick tech is useful is in this. This is a very basic additional circuit it uses via toggling bits. However, if you input anything above zero tick, it actually breaks. It does not work. Uh, so that is incredibly handy. Now, what you do see in my previous hex wire design, this is the instant one, is that we actually use buds. Yes, this is a bud. That is a bud in a chained update to actually perform an update order, right? So here first, then here, then here. It goes in that direction uh, because this is required for comparator priming. If you check here, it does instantly work. Side note, here is an example of comparator priming using the rails. So how this will work, it actually powers it from this side, so it will update from this direction. And then a tick after that, it actually powers this comparator line. So what we should see is that these will always power before these. And that is in fact what we see here. Now going back to this thing for a moment, another thing I'd like to mention is this piston right here and all of them over there. Uh, they actually changed the rule set. So how you see here is that these two have different rule sets, right? So this one will be locked in the opposite times when this one will be locked. It's just reversed logic. And that's how we achieve the subtraction addition. Now if there's a block here, input will be taken there. If there's a block here, input will be taken here. That is how we switch. Now, that's actually everything I have to say about pistons. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if, as always, everything will be in the description including sources and schematics of the build. My mods will be there too. If you like the video, like, subscribe, and of course, uh, ring the notification bell, and I'll see you next time.